Hey everybody, welcome back to Actual Investing. Today we have two more popular stocks that are down after earnings. MongoDB, ticker MDB, and Dell, ticker Dell, are both down after reporting today. So let's look into these earnings releases and find out if either of these stocks are a buy on the dip. So let's start with MongoDB. So MongoDB is a database company, and I think what sent the stock down was twofold. On the one hand, their gross margins are actually deteriorating a slight bit, and they're looking like they're going farther and farther from turning a profit. On the other hand, they revised down their full year revenue guidance. So let's take a look at just the results and then we'll look forward at the guidance. So here's last year's release and they expected to have revenue of 436 to 440 million for this quarter. They came in at 450.6 million. So they handily beat the top end of expectations. So that was a nice revenue beat. However, the guidance is what matters. So full year fiscal 2025 guidance last quarter was supposed to be 1.9 to 1.93 billion. Now they're looking at 1.88 to 1.9 billion. So the new top end of guidance was the old bottom end of guidance. So one could say that the guidance is still in line, but this is definitely lowered guidance. We're looking at essentially 14% year-over-year revenue growth in the midpoint to 12.5% year-over-year revenue growth at the midpoint. So 30% down is a pretty significant drop, and I think that has to do with their valuation. MongoDB currently has a price to annualized sales of about 12 and a half times. So these are the types of double-digit valuations that you see in a rapidly growing SaaS company. However, MongoDB is not really seeing that rapid growth anymore with only 12.5% growth expected. I think investors are just not willing to pay that premium anymore, and that's why we're seeing such a haircut. However, now that a lot of that premium is gone, maybe the stock is worth buying today. So I think in order to find out why their growth is slowing, we need to figure out what MongoDB does. So MongoDB operates what's known as a NoSQL, that stands for Not Only SQL, Non-Relational Database. Now, if you don't have a technology background, I certainly don't, that may not make a lot of sense. But essentially, there are two types of databases. There are relational databases, which is kind of the standard go-to database, which stores information in tables. And then there's the MongoDB non-relational database. So the whole point of MongoDB is that their non-relational databases are designed with the cloud in mind, which really helps them to become very scalable. So MongoDB is a great solution for customers who have lots and lots of data that's only going to grow over time. That's actually where the name MongoDB comes from. Mongo, enormous, humongous, right? So that's where the name comes from. They're aimed at companies that need to be able to have a solution that is going to grow with them. And that's why they coined this non-relational MongoDB database. It's a document database. It stores data in documents rather than in tables. Now their primary product is called Atlas. And in their earnings release, MongoDB says, we had a slower than expected start to the year for both Atlas consumption growth and new workload wins which will have a downstream impact for the remainder of fiscal 2025. So that's the reason that they lowered their guidance. They're just not closing these deals. In my last video on UiPath, I talked about elongated sales cycles. And so it sounds like MongoDB is seeing the same thing that UiPath is seeing, the same thing that Salesforce is seeing, the same thing that all of these software companies are seeing. It's just companies are tightening their wallets a little bit and are not willing to shell out as much money as they had been previously. Why is this happening? I think it's partially because of macroeconomic headwinds, which is kind of the excuse that every company has been giving. I can't tell you the last time I saw an earnings report that didn't mention macroeconomic headwinds. It just kind of seems like that's the term that's being thrown around in every single earnings report. Elongated sales cycles, macroeconomic headwinds. What does that really mean? Well, it comes down to the reason why you'd invest in MongoDB. You would invest in a company like MongoDB because you're bullish on the growth of big data. So AI algorithms use data. That's how they make decisions. That's how they're programmed. That's how they're run. That is the oil that feeds them, right? So cars need oil. AI needs data. That's sort of the analogy that we need to look at here. So as big data becomes more and more pervasive in our society, we're going to need companies like MongoDB, like Snowflake, like Databricks, which is currently private, but may become public soon, um, in order to house and organize this type of data. So the fact that MongoDB isn't growing terribly fast 
is a bit of a red flag, and I think that's another reason why the stock is down so much today. So to summarize, MongoDB down because A, they have a very steep valuation for not such a great growth number, and B, they're not looking like they're going to turn a profit anytime soon. However, they are free cash flow positive. So let's take a look at MongoDB's financials. MongoDB is looking at income from operations of 168 to 183 million for fiscal 2025, which roughly aligns with calendar 2024. So even though they're not turning a gap profit, which is generally accepted accounting principles, they are making cash from their operations. They are generating cash. And even though their gross margins have fallen a bit from 75% to 73%, they are still planning to have income from operations in probably the $170 million range. Now, of course, this is down. Here's the previous earnings release from 186 to 201 million. So they're not gonna be generating as much cash, but it remains that they are still generating cash from their income. If we look at their balance sheet, if you know me, you know I love a good balance sheet. They do have 2 billion in cash, and this is steadily growing because like I said, they are cash flow positive. They have cash of about 2 billion and they have liabilities of 1.8 billion. So if they wanted to, they could pay off all of their debt and still have cash left over. Now, I say this a lot. I like to look for companies that could pay off all their debt, but I don't want companies to pay off all their debt. So I'm not saying that MongoDB should go out and pay off all their debt. A lot of times it makes sense to have some debt because you can write off the interest and maybe they locked in a low interest rate. I would need to look into that. But essentially what I'm saying is that their balance sheet is strong and if they needed to, they could pay off all their debt. So MongoDB on first glance is looking all right here. Now let's take a look at Dell. Dell is a company that I don't really follow, so I'm just going to give you my high-level overview of what I think is going on with Dell and my sort of uneducated opinion about what I think of Dell. So Dell did beat earnings estimates. They had revenue of $22.2 billion versus $21.6 billion that Wall Street was expecting, and they did slightly beat on earnings as well. However, the stock is currently down 16% after hours, on top of being down 5% during the day. So we're looking at an over 20% drop for the whole day. This has been pretty common. I'm seeing so many companies drop in the double digits with this past week. So I think investors are starting to get a little bit spooked. So maybe this is an opportunity. Let's find out. Here's Dell's earnings release, and they talk about revenue that grew 6% year over year. It's very important to note that Dell is not a growth stock. They're very much so a value stock. So 6% growth is perfectly fine. I'm not too worried about that. What's really cool to see is that their servers and networking revenue grew 42%. So I think that really speaks to the demand for AI infrastructure and AI hardware. Really quickly, here are the servers that Dell makes for data centers. So put simply, a server is a specialized computer that's used for AI. It's not like the typical computer that you'd think of, like that you might go to work and use, but it's a computer that's specifically housed in a data center somewhere and runs large language models and other AI applications like that. So Dell, very much an AI stock. However, is it a buy? Well, for that, since I said I'm not very educated, I'd like to turn to a company called Morningstar, which is essentially an investment research website. This is Morningstar's latest review on Dell. It says Dell Technologies is a large provider of enterprise hardware. Sure, we knew that. Let's keep going. We forecast Dell to see no more than modest top line growth into the medium and long term and see little opportunity for material and durable margin expansion. Okay, so Morningstar is pretty bearish on Dell. Let's fact check that modest top line growth in the medium to long term. So Dell actually did not provide revenue guidance on their earnings report, which was kind of weird. They waited for the call, but the guidance that came in was 93 to $95 billion for fiscal 2025. If we look at Dell stock's income statement, 95 billion would be significant growth from 2024, but it's actually less revenue than they made in both 2022 and 2023. So sure, it's growth from 2024, but it's actually negative growth from the two years before that. So I think Morningstar might be onto something. I think where Dell lacks revenue growth, they make up for in free cash flow generation. So last quarter, Dell had 1.16 billion of net income. And this quarter, they had net income of 1.5 billion. Cash flow from operations was 1 billion. So every quarter that goes by, Dell is generating 1 billion in cash, which they can use to reinvest in the business or give back to shareholders. And we see the latter is what they're doing. Dell returned 1.1 billion to shareholders through share repurchases and dividends and ended the quarter with 7.3 billion in cash and investments. Okay, that's a great segue. Let's look at Dell's balance sheet. 
Yikes, they're cutting it pretty close here. So Dell is a very capital intensive business, right? They sell computers, they sell servers, which are computers. Computers are not cheap. The infrastructure needed to build all this is also not cheap. So Dell is vertically integrated. So they do everything in house, which is why they have so much debt. So we see they have assets of 82 billion and debt of 84 billion. So technically they are underwater on their balance sheet. By just a little bit, they have negative equity. For me, I don't like to invest in companies with negative equity. Sometimes I can look past it though, if the company does generate a lot of cash. So in this case, Dell does generate a lot of cash. Um, I think of companies like Starbucks, which I'm heavily invested in. Starbucks also generates a lot of cash, but also has negative equity. So for me, if I can look past it for Starbucks, I could probably look past it for something like Dell, since they are making these nice profits. All right, so let's go to my spreadsheet and we're gonna analyze these two companies and see if I think either of them are a buy. Let's start with MongoDB. So MongoDB on my spreadsheet gets a score of 11.5 and Dell gets a score of 11.2. Where does this score come from? Well, I rate stocks on four factors. These are gross margins, annualized revenue, which shows how much market share has been captured, price to annualized sales, which is valuation, and growth, which I measure by quarterly year over year revenue growth. So out of those four factors, you can have a score of a possible 20, which I've never seen before, and my average is about 12. So both MongoDB and Dell are a bit below average. So why are they below average? For Dell, it's mostly their margins. Dell's gross margins are 24%. The minimum that I look for when I invest in a company is about 20%. And the reason I don't invest typically in companies with gross margins below 20% is that they don't have a lot of wiggle room to compete on pricing. So companies with low gross margins can sometimes be undercut by bigger players. So for Dell, they are the bigger player. However, if another company decided to get into selling servers and undercut Dell on price, Dell would have a really hard time defending their moat. What's benefiting Dell, however, is their very, very low valuation. Price to annualized sales currently clocks in at 1.4. So like I said, Dell is very much a value stock, not a growth stock. So if you're a growth investor, you might look at Dell's 6% year over year revenue growth, which like we already talked about is not actually growing if you look at the previous years and say, wow, this is not a stock I wanna invest in. However, value investors might look at Dell and say, wow, Dell has been returning cash to shareholders in the form of dividends that have been growing steadily over time. So it depends on what type of investor you are, but for me, I'm not personally a fan of Dell stock. I'm not entirely convinced that they have a very strong moat, and I think that all of the benefits that they're seeing from AI servers are going to eventually dry up, and then they'll be left as a slow-growing company with not much in the way of future growth. So that's just me. Tell me what you think about Dell below. Now let's look at MongoDB. MongoDB's growth currently is 22.3% year over year. This is based on the quarter that just occurred. However, they're forecasting for the year 12.5% year over year revenue growth. So we know that growth is gonna slow. However, we also know that their market cap dropped about 20% after hours. So let's make both of those changes. Let's change their market cap to 18 billion where it might open tomorrow. And let's change the growth to 12.5. We see that this actually bumps down my score because even though their valuation lowers, their quarterly growth lowers enough that it does offset it. So for me, I don't think I'd be interested in taking a position in MongoDB either. Another reason why I wouldn't want to invest in MongoDB is because I already own a company called Snowflake. Snowflake is another database company that's growing quite a bit faster than MongoDB. And even though their growth is also slowing, make no mistake about that, and their valuation is also high, they are, in my opinion, a leader. They have a bigger market cap, they have better gross margins, and they have a higher annualized revenue number. So for me, Snowflake is just kind of the no-brainer buy between the two. Even though it has a higher valuation, for me, I'm willing to pay a higher valuation for what I believe to be a superior company. But this video isn't about Snowflake, so if you want me to do a deep dive in Snowflake, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other co companies you want me to cover, please let me know. Thanks so much for sticking around. Please like the video if you liked it, and please subscribe if you like content like this. I've been doing more deep dives into earnings releases lately, so... Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you all have an awesome day.